and still be a fool. Man, is that not crazy to you? You can know everything in this world and still be a fool. See, what knowledge does, though, you know, the Bible says my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And I'm going to tell you, it's knowledge of his commandments. That's what follows that. But let me tell you this. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Having right knowledge or a knowledge of something gives you the power to choose. Right? Before that, you're just ignorant, right? Y'all with me? Uh, and I don't want to get so deep because I'm telling you, we could have went down so many rabbit holes, and I'm trying to just not do that. Um, so sweet, simple to the poor, the point, and uh, impactful is my my goal when I get up here and preach, and I'm working on that. You know, I really am. So knowledge gives you the power to choose, right? If you don't have knowledge, you don't have choice, right? The knowledge is the ability to be able to choose, right? Uh, but I want to explain that knowledge, you can have knowledge and not have wisdom and understanding. But you can't have understanding and wisdom without knowledge. I'm going to say that again. You can have knowledge, all of it in the world, all of it you want. So it is a building block for where you're going. But let's, let's hold tight. But you can't have understanding and wisdom without knowledge, right? Does that make sense? All right. Um, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 3 through 9. I feel uh, it necessary to uh, kind of get into the scriptures concerning wisdom. And let me tell you something. The whole book of Proverbs is wisdom, right? So there is a lot of subject matter to deal with. Uh, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 3. You know, and it's funny to, to grow in knowledge. Um, because knowledge puffs up. And this is an interesting thing about knowledge. It's like we need it to move forward, but at the same time, it puffs up and can become your destruction. Does that make sense? See, knowledge says, knowledge says, I know, right? Wisdom says, I know nothing as I ought to know. Amen. Are y'all with me? Uh, I ain't even too Proverbs yet. Are y'all there already? Y'all beat me to the punch. Sorry. Uh, Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 3. Should have had my pages marked out. Y'all bear with me. Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 3. The book right after Psalms. Not even close. All right. Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 3. Um. Uh, Huh? No, it's okay. All right. I'm there. Y'all with me? Y'all got to work with me. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 3. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the, uh, in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, her as in wisdom, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all your getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor. When you embrace her, she will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. 
And there's just so many things on this, uh, on wisdom and on understanding and on knowledge uh, that we just couldn't get to them all in one sitting. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Somebody say the beginning. The beginning. So wisdom is not really started when you gain knowledge. That's not it at all. You can have knowledge all day long. Wisdom, the beginning of wisdom, is the fear of the Lord. Right? And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So that's not just any knowledge. Knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied, and years of life will be added to you. If you are wise... You are wise for yourself, and if you scoff, you will bear it alone. But the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord. And I found that so true in life that, you know, in the beginning, I've always wanted knowledge. I always wanted to obtain knowledge, and I've always wanted to grow and have knowledge and know the answers to everything, right? But how many know some questions are not derived from the what? Some are from the how, right? Some questions are not just what, right? Some questions are how. Some questions are why, right? Are y'all with me? And let me explain something. In a small sense, knowledge is the what. Y'all with me? Wisdom is the how. Understanding is the why. Are y'all with me? I'm going to repeat it. Knowledge is the what. Wisdom is the how. Understanding is the why. And to break it down, like we, we, we'll relate this to, to building a house. Are y'all with me? Because I do a little bit of construction. You know what I'm saying? And saying God has endowed me with a little bit of knowledge. Uh, and now I perform that knowledge. And I know what I'm doing a little bit sometimes. Sometimes I just jump in and pray. You know what I'm saying? But so... The what, the knowledge, would be having the knowledge of, let's say, the blueprints, right? You can have the blueprints to build a house and not be able to build a house. Are y'all with me? The knowledge of, uh, 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 let's say, a tape measure and the knowledge of a saw. Like, we can have the knowledge. I, I can have that knowledge, right? But that doesn't mean I know how to build a house, Right? But I did learn once I have that knowledge, how I many knows that's going to be helpful when it goes to building a house? <laughs> See, because when I know it intimately, when I know the saw, I know how to make cuts, I know how to make measurements, that's a building block for me to understand how to build, right? I'm going to need to know that, right? So the wisdom is the how, right? It's how to apply the knowledge to make it work, right? Uh, and I'm just trying to give you an example. This is not the end-all, say-all. I'm just trying to give you something to look at. This is not the depths of wisdom. I'm about to bring you, uh, and we're going to uh, take the express lane to wisdom and understanding. But I'm trying to give you the depths and, and trying to explain it the best way I can. Uh, so the, the understanding would be why. So, okay. Number one, you take the knowledge of what you know. If you don't never do anything with the knowledge, guess what? That knowledge is worthless, right? Are y'all with me? It's when you learn how to apply that knowledge to your life that it becomes a value. Other than that, you're just spouting words. It's not doing anything. You're, you're telling everybody how to become a millionaire, right? But they see that you're still broke and busted. How many know that ain't going to carry no weight? Are y'all with me? Having the knowledge, I mean, you, you can learn directly from whoever and not apply it to your life, and it's worthless. It doesn't mean anything, right? But it's when knowledge is accompanied with wisdom and understanding that you apply it to your life, and it starts working for you. Have y'all ever heard the saying, make life work for you? Don't work for life, but make life work for you? This is wisdom. Being able to take everything you've learned and apply it to your life for that smooth, Operation. Are y'all with me? And 
got no amens. I ain't got no, I'm witches. Where's Christy at? She's my, I'm with you. Where is Christy? Uh, uh, Christy, we're looking for you. We love you, sister. Uh, so just kind of remember the knowledge is what? The wisdom is how. So I know how to build a house, and I can use that and, and build a house. And uh, the why is the understanding of things. So in other words, there's a lot of times in life we don't know why. But I found that when you, when you gain wisdom and you gain knowledge, you begin to understand as well. You get understanding. Right? And sometimes understanding and, and, and wisdom are uh, they're the same. They're, they're the same and then they're also necessary for one each other. You almost can't have wisdom without understanding and understanding without wisdom. So I don't know which one comes first, but I know knowledge is necessary for both of them. Y'all, are y'all with me? Is this too much information? All right, praise God. Uh, but I want to get to the to the bare nuts and bolts of what we're talking about. Because we need to grow as a people to become more than just people who spout something out of our mouth all the time. Sometimes you need to understand why you're saying something or uh, how that's affecting your environment, right? Because there's a lot of stuff I know that I don't stand up here and say, right? You know, a fool would just spout off anything that said, and I'm not saying I'm wise, but I'm telling you as I grew older, I learned to understand that this does not impart grace to people. What I'm saying is not going to build them up. So there's some things I know I just keep to myself, right? And that's practical wisdom. But there's also a divine wisdom. Are y'all with me? How many knows this divine wisdom, this divine knowledge, and this divine understanding is what we need? Uh, and, and it's hard to understand in the flesh that there's a divine wisdom. And part of that divine wisdom, that divine knowledge, and that uh, divine understanding Oh, see, I don't forgot it. Um, but part of that, that, that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is understanding the principles and laws of God. Understanding the principles and laws of the Spirit. Are y'all are y'all with me? Because when you understand those principles and laws of God, which are found right here, you can understand how this world operates in a sense. There's a lot of that divine wisdom. But see, we can go obtaining it and, and filling up with knowledge. But I'm going to teach you something. Watch this. I want you to go with me to Exodus chapter 31, verse 1. And this is the short version of my message, and I'm sure y'all will thank me for that later. Uh, because I'm trying to think of what's going to stick when I preach. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have a feeling a lot of times when I speak, most of it doesn't even get received. So I'm trying not to chase the wind and just spout out a bunch of stuff. Uh, but Exodus chapter 31. And this is during the time of building the tabernacle, right? And Moses is spoken to the Lord, uh, spoken of by the Lord. He says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I see, or see I have called by name Bezalel. Sounds like the devil. The son of Uriah. The son of Hur. Of the tribe of Judah. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Here's the, here's the express line, watch this. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God. In wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge. And in all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold, to work in silver and bronze, in the cutting of jewels, for setting jewels, in the carving of wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. I wanted you to come here because I want you to realize, just like Solomon, how many knows the story of Solomon? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Uh, just like Sol Solomon, God has endowed this man for a specific task. See, we get caught up in doing the things of the Lord, doing things for the Lord. But the, the real key is when you find what you're supposed to be doing for the Lord, you have to understand that your real source is God. Whether it be in building physical church, 
whether it be in uh, finances, whatever, whatever it is. Are y'all with me? Come on. That we are doing a work for the Lord, and God will give you a special skill and a special knowledge, a special understanding, a special revelation. Let me tell you something. I look back over my life, and we talk about this a lot. Often, I, I really see myself as the fool who meditated on the things of God that become somewhat more intelligent than I used to be. Are y'all with me? There is truly a wisdom and a knowledge and an understanding of life that comes directly from God. And this is the knowledge that you really want. This is the knowledge that people uh, see and they're like, man, there's something about that. Or, like, see, in the physical, we would see this guy just gracefully constructing, a, a, you know, the cherubim that sit beside the, uh, you know, and, and, and building all these things in the name of God. We'd be like, man, he is amazing at this or that. But it's really because God endowed him. Are y'all with me? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Uh, so we can take the, the the pursuit of knowledge and the vanity of chasing the wind and gosh, learning everything in the world and under the sun. Uh, but how many knows that God has a way to communicate with us? And he also endows us for the task, for the things that we're called to do. Uh, so, you know, Solomon at a young age, and I'm just going to tell you this just in case. This is not just an isolated incident where God endowed somebody. Solomon inherited the throne from his father, which is King David, right? King David was just this graceful warrior, king slash everything, right? Uh, and then, you know, Solomon's like this young boy who inherits the throne in the, in the stead of his father, right? Uh... So he doesn't really know how to be a king. Are y'all with me? A nine, nine to power a hole was Solomon. He was a young boy, put it that way. He didn't know how to be king. But what he did is he prayed to God. As a matter of fact, God showed up to him and said, Solomon, what, what shall I do for you? And Solomon had asked God if you would just give me the wisdom to know how to come in and how to go out, to know how to judge this people rightly. Now, how many times uh, have y'all seen a lad where uh, the genie pops out of this bottle and he's like, three wishes, right? This is not how God is. Everything that, that when God encountered it, a lot of it has to do with the test. But number one, what's in your heart? Because God told Solomon, he said, because you did not ask for riches. You did not ask for long life. You did not ask for anything, but you asked for wisdom. And all you're getting, you get wisdom. You ask for wisdom on how to come in, how to go out, how to judge the people, how to do what? How to be exactly what called, God called him to be, right? Amen. He said, because you have done this, not only am I going to make you the wisest man that ever lived. Right? Are y'all with me? Yeah. I'm trying to show you this backdoor stuff, man. It's uh, important. Because we can learn knowledge, learn wisdom, and uh, try to live this life, but it's really all found in the Holy One. The knowledge of the Holy One. So anyway. Uh, so you got, uh, you know, Solomon made was made by God the most wise man in all the earth. And he, he himself became a proverb. When we think of wisdom, we think of Solomon, right? Just like we think of Samson, we think of strength, right? So when we think of Solomon, we think of wisdom. And this was something that was endowed to him. And the Bible says that God enlarged his heart to understand. So this is something only God can do that part. Y'all with me? Yeah. So when the Bible says, add to your faith virtue and virtue knowledge, I say, be careful what kind of knowledge you add to yourself. Because a lot of it is a vain, vain pursuit. Amen. And I, I, have you ever met people that just know everything? 
I'm one of those, or I used to be one of those people. I try not to be that guy, right? Because I've learned that, you know, that guy, nobody likes that guy, right? I mean, look, when a lot of people come to you, uh, a lot of times they don't really care what you know. Right. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? So a lot of things are found in discernment. A lot of things, you could be the greatest counselor in the world and never say a word. Because a lot of times people come because they need somebody to talk to. They don't need information. Are you with me? So I, I'm just I'm throwing this stuff out there so you understand, man. There, there's something about knowledge. There's something about wisdom. There's something about understanding that we all desire and want. Uh, because with knowledge, you can accomplish a lot of things if it's accompanied with wisdom and understanding. But I'm going to tell you how to get it. According to the word of God, uh, Colossians chapter 2. Well, number one, the Bible also says anyone who lacks wisdom, ask God, ask your Father in heaven, who gives liberally to all his children, right? We'll go there in a minute. Uh, Colossians chapter 2. I hope you are picking something up from this and it doesn't just sound like a bunch of rambling words because there really is some le le uh, legit understanding in what I'm telling you right now. Uh, and I do want to read something that I read last night and it was very impactful for me to understand. Colossians chapter 2. For I want you to know what a great conflict, and this is Paul talking to the church of Colossus or whatnot. I have for you and those in Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my flesh, or my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding. Obtaining to all riches, to the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ. Y'all ready for this? In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I want to read it one more time. Being knit together in love, obtaining and attaining to all the riches of the fullness of of assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God both of the Father and of Christ so he's he's pointing you to the Father he's pointing you to Christ and he's saying in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge now I say this least anyone should deceive you with persuasive words for though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you, therefore, have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him. So walk in him, rooted and built up in him. Are y'all with me? Are y'all following me? And established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, real quick. Sorry. It is uh, chapter 3, verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family of heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might. Somebody say be strengthened with might. Strengthened with might. Through his spirit. In the inner man. In down. Y'all ready? Through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts. Through faith. That you being rooted and grounded. In love. May be able to comprehend. With all the saints. What is the width. And the length. And the depth. And the height. So it's like all angles of this thing. You know, the width, the length, the depth, the height, 
all the measurements, to understand it, to get the full measure of everything. Y'all ready? To know the love of Christ. To know intimately. To know the love of Christ. Which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Uh, I'm going to read this clip to you that I read off the internet last night. Uh, that I found pretty worthy. It says, wise people know how to learn. They never seek knowledge for their own sake. They know how to talk. They speak the truth in love. They know how to act. They pursue justice and obey evil. Perceptive people balance their words and actions. They say and do right things at the right time for the right reasons. That's good. Look, I'm going to say it again. They say and do the right things at the right time and for the right reasons. The discerning person soon realizes that biblical wisdom is more about practice than philosophy. Wise people live skillfully. They apply heavenly counsel to earthly conduct. Are y'all with me? Amen. Wisdom is the ability to judge correctly and to follow the best course of action. Based on knowledge and understanding. I'm going to read that again. Wisdom is the ability to judge correctly. And to follow the best course of action. Based on knowledge and understanding. Wisdom is the ability to see something from God's viewpoint. Somebody say that's totally different than knowledge. Totally different. Wisdom is the ability to see something from God's viewpoint. Wisdom is God's character in the many practical affairs of life. You. Wisdom is the knowledge and the ability to make the right choices at the opportune time. How many knows uh, that saying and doing the right thing in the wrong time can still be wrong? Uh, there's a lot to go into on that, but I'm not. In other words, you can have the instruction manual, but how to say and when to say plays a very, very big key, right? So knowing what to say at the right time is a very big uh, understanding. But uh, wisdom is the knowledge and the ability to make the right choices at the opportune time. The consistency of making the right choice is an, is an indication of one's spiritual maturity. Now, what I was telling you about 2 Peter, verse chapter 1, verse 5, is labeled the uh, spiritual growth in my Bible. So we are growing mature in the things of God. Right? And as you grow, you learn to learn with, with patience and not just speak. What does the Bible say about wisdom? I couldn't repeat it, man. See, I'm telling you, I'm starting to forget every scripture in the world. Uh, when I was younger, I just spouted off, right? Uh, but I've gained a lot more understanding now that I'm older versus when I was younger. And that was my issue. I had a lot of knowledge, but not a lot of wisdom and understanding. So now when I go through the scriptures, I've actually experienced a lot of those things in my life. And it's a different thing to experience it in your life. Then you can know it and even recognize it in other people's lives. Y'all, are y'all with me on that? Um, by wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, a house is established. You know, when you, when you think about building a house, and we talked about this a minute ago, you know, this is synonymous with building the kingdom of God over and over and over again. There's two main, uh, I guess you would say, thoughts that you come across time and time again when it comes to building the kingdom of God. 
it's in seeds and in growing, right? Plant seeds and growing. And the other is building, like a builder who builds a house. God says that, or Jesus says, you know, he who builds his house on the rock is wise, right? Because when the wind comes, the rain comes, that house is going to stand, right? So one who is wise will build his house on the rock. You can have the knowledge to build the house, right? But if you build it on the sand, it's going to fall. There's a lot of things uh, that's related to building in the kingdom of God. And Paul says, I was a wise master builder for the grace that God had given to me. Right? So he's building. He's building. And we're all still the work on which Paul was building. Are y'all with me? We're just still building on what he was building. Are y'all with me? But I, I want to I want to finish with uh, James And I hope I haven't bored you to death With my preaching today James chapter 4 Or no, not chapter 4 I'll get, I'll get there Man, it is hot in here. Did y'all turn the heat on? Or? Is it me? Yeah. I'm emitting these fumes over here. Yeah, no, I don't think that's me, I feel like. Uh, it's something else. It's it's outside of me, and it's coming to me, and it's making me uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, I guess so. All right, listen. Uh James chapter 3, verse 13. And we're going to get out of here because we're past our little 30 minutes, 35 minutes. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help y'all out, man. Get y'all something short and sweet. Y'all very glad Christy ain't here. She, she be telling me to preach three hours. My brethren, let, let not many of you become teachers knowing that we shall... Oh, excuse me. It's verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? He didn't say who had all the knowledge in the world, right? He said, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you are bitter, envy, and self-seeking, but if, there is, if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above. But is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. This is very uh, awesome things to understand right here. Number one, it says this wisdom does not descend from above that is self-seeking. Are y'all with me? This does not come from God, he says, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where there is envy and self-seeking, confusion and every evil thing are there. So where there's envy and self-seeking, now, and this is, this is what we need to understand to grow, grow here, to grow everywhere. Where there is self-seeking, envy, jealousy, bitterness. According to James, he's saying this is earthly, sensual and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above. Somebody say wisdom. wisdom. That is from above is first pure, then peaceable. Gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So I'm going to end this message, but what I want you to understand is there is a wisdom that's from above. Are y'all with me? Uh, and Christ is uh, this wisdom. If you follow the life of Christ and how he lived, he was the exact 
expression of how humans should conduct themselves in the earth. Are y'all with me? Uh, and in Christ and in the Father is wrapped up these hidden treasures of wisdom. But the wisdom that is from above is pure. Its motives are pure. It's peaceable. It's gentle. It's, yielding, it's able to yield and bear with one another, right? This is wisdom that's from above. But where they're self-seeking, uh, so this is two forms of what's going on. Are y'all with me? And we have to examine ourselves continually in these matters because the heart is deceitful, right? Uh, and to meditate on being wise is to meditate on the things of God and apply your knowledge to your life to walk out the things of God. So we need to be seeking to be like God, peaceable, gentle, wise, and understanding, not self-seeking. You know, and that, that's the thing about leadership. We are uh, entrusted to put everybody else's situations above our own. This is leadership, like Christ. He went low, built up. Are y'all with me? Uh, so I hope that, that that message helps you a little bit to kind of have those three facets of understanding when it comes to knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Uh, there's a lot of things to learn in this world, but I'm going to tell you the most valuable is Christ. When you learn Christ, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and the rest will be added unto you. Let me tell you something. I didn't know what that scripture meant, but I know now. I, I can quote that scripture, but I get it now. Are y'all with me? All right, well, I love y'all, and praise God. We're going to keep trucking along. Next week will be about self-control. I hope it's uh, good word, good knowledge, good good wisdom. And I hope that we can apply this word to our life, you know, and learn to live by it. Praise God.